Hello and welcome to this Essential Maths video for your GCSE Physics. We're going to be looking at balanced moments here. If you're confused about what a moment is, um, have a go and look at my previous video all about moments on that own. This video is um, like part two of moments, is a bit more advanced. This is likely to be on a higher tier paper and not a foundation tier paper. So these are the rules that I get my students to follow whenever they're answering a maths question in physics. I've answered a lot and I really think these rules will help you make sure you get all of the marks. But just very briefly, whenever I set marks for my students, it's always a four mark question. The first mark is for identifying the correct formula. The second mark is for your working. The third mark is for actually doing the maths. And the fourth mark is going to be figure for me the units. So this is the equation that we're going to be using in this video. Um, moments are in newton meters, force is in newtons, distance is in meters. And the other thing you need to know for this video is if a moment is going to be balanced, the anti-clockwise moment has to equal the clockwise moment. So quite a lot of the questions I've seen for this are going to be pictures that you have to identify, but I want you, know, you to apply exactly the same rule. So I want all of the numbers circled. And then we have to know that everything on this side has to equal everything on this side. So let's do the first side first. So our moment equals force times distance. Our force is 3. Our distance is 5. So that equals 15. So now we know what the moment is for this half of the equation, for this half of the seesaw, because we've worked it out on this side. And because they're balanced, it has to be the same. So uh, moment equals force times distance. We know the moment's 15 because we worked that out over here. The force is 4, and then the distance is what we're working out. If we rearrange the equation, we do 15 divided by 4. 15 divided by 4 equals 3.75 metres. Now, because th this is quite a complicated question, there's going to be a fair amount of marks available for this. If you make a mistake in this part of the equation, if you do any question where you have to use your answer in a second part of the equation, if you make a mistake here, they can do something called error carried forward. So you won't lose all the marks if you make a mistake right at the beginning. This is why it's always so, so important to write down all of your mark working. So here's another example for us to look at. Again, the first thing I want you to do is to circle all of the numbers in the equation. Um, the, I'm going to start with this side this time because that's the side that we have all the numbers for so moment equals force times distance moment equals 13 which is our force times 9 which is our distance 13 times 9 is 117 that's our moment and that's newton meters so now we know the moment from this side because it's balanced it also has to be the moment over this side so let me change the colour to make it clear. Moment equals force times distance. We know what the moment is now, 117. Equals force, that we don't know, times the distance, which is 7. So, so if we rearrange that, we get 117 divided by 7 equals the force. Which gives us a force of 16 point seven newtons. So yet again, circle all of the numbers in the question. If you looked at a few examples and think you're okay with this, what I'd like you to do is to pause the video, have a go at doing these yourself, and then come back and check your answers for me. So moment equals force times distance. And that's 17 times 11. 17 times 11 equals 187. Moment equals force times distance. 187 equals 9 times distance. So 187 divided by 9 equals distance. 
course the distance equals 21 meters. Okay, slightly tricky here because you have two things over here, but we treat it exactly the same. Circle all of the numbers. Moment equals force times distance. The moment equals six newtons times seven meters. Six times seven, 42 newton meters. So over to this side now. Moment equals force times distance. 42 equals uh, the force. We don't know the force in total, so I'm just going to leave that for the moment. Times 3, which is the distance. So 42 divided by 3 equals the force. That's 14. Now, because up here we have 2 newtons and another newton, we have to do x equals 14 minus 2, which equals 12 newtons. They could put this kind of extra step in an exam. It will be right towards the end of the higher paper because we're starting to get tricky now. Okay, so things are getting quite a bit trickier now because on this side we have two things going on and on this side we only have one thing going on. First thing I want you to do, as always, is to circle all of the numbers. And those of you that are really on the ball will notice that these are in non-standard um, units. So the first thing we have to do is convert centimetres into metres. There's really quite a lot of maths going on in this equation, so this is, this is proper top grade we're talking about here. So 20 centimetres convert it into metres, we need to divide it by 100, so it's 0.2 metres. 16 centimetres divided by 100 equals 0.16 metres. And then we need to do two calculations over this side. I'm going to call these B and C. So let's do B first. Moment equals force times distance. The force is 2 newtons. The distance is 0.16 metres. So the moment for B, 2 times 0.16 is 0.32 uh, newton metres. Let me squeeze C in here, down here. Moment equals force times distance. It may get repetitive writing the same equation out over and over again, but it's really what sort of thing that the examiner is looking for. So that equals 0.4 newton metres. Now to work out the total um, moment over this side of the equation, we just need to add those two together. So that is 0.32 plus 0.4 equals 0.72 newton meters. Now to move on to this half over here, again we need our equation, moment equals force times distance, the force is 7, the distance we don't know, but we do know the moment because it is 0.72 because we're in balance. 0.72 divided by 7 equals our distance. And that is 0.1 metres. Okay, these are getting even trickier now. Um, now, you might get a picture like this where you have two things that are balancing both on the same side of the pivot which can be really, really confusing. But what you need to know is that the weight of primrose is acting down and then the string is pulling upwards. So if primrose weighs two newtons, that is our force acting downwards. And then we need to find x newtons, the force that the string is pulling upwards. So it's exactly the same maths going on. They've just drawn it in a slightly different way. This is the sort of thing they're going to be doing in the P3 exam to really test if you understand what's going on, if you really deserve those A's and those A stars. So let's start with this situation first. Moment equals force times distance. The force is 2 newtons, distance is 3 metres. So that is 6 newton metres. Because it's in balance, we can now move on to this situation where we know what the moment is. Moment equals force 
times distance. We know the moment is 6. We don't know what the force is, but we do know the distance is... Oops, we do know the distance is 1. So 6 divided by 1 equals the force. So the force is 6 newtons. Okay, another example from the exam paper here, exactly the same sort of thing going on. We need to find the weight of primrose this time. So, circling all of my units, uh, all of my numbers, moment equals force times distance. My moment is equal to 160 times 1.75, which equals 160 times 1.75. 280 newton meters. Um, so then our next equation is moment equals force times distance. 280 equals force times 0 0.5. 280 divided by 0.5 equals 560 newtons. And that is Primrose's weight. She might need to go on a diet. Okay, so another situation here, but instead of pulling down, we have something pushing up. So we have here, 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 and here. This is getting really tricky because there's another layer in here that we need to work out. So this is something pushing down, and the whole weight of this is acting down um, here, the uh, the up force is pushing here, but we don't know. We need to work out the distance to do a tiny little bit of extra maths. So we have ninety, and we have seven point five. So we just need to do ninety minus seven point five equals eighty two point five centimeters, and that is our distance for the upwards force. This is a really complicated exam question here. And again, we need to convert centimetres into metres. So 90 centimetres divided by 100 equals 0.9 metres. 82.5 divided by 100 equals 0.825 metres. Now we can get on to doing the maths. So moment equals force times distance. Um, Moment equals 80 times 0 0.9 because this is the weight of the object and the whole weight of the object is acting down here. So 80 times 0.9 equals 72 newton meters. Um, now we have moment equals force times distance, 72. The force is the bit we're going to find out, but we know our distance is 0.825 metres. So 72 divided by 0.825. And that is 87 newtons. Okay, and a really, really tricky, horrible one um, to end with. If you can do this, this, this is the sort of question I would set as an A-level physics because there is a lot going on here before you even get to the calculations. Uh, these are my cat's actual weights, by the way. Prim is tiny compared to the other two, which are built like rugby players. So, um, Primrose, Trigger and Hope have been to the park and now on a um, seesaw. Whenever I get a very wordy question like this, I always like to draw myself a little diagram because I like pictures and this helps me visualise things. So Prim and Hobe are sitting on one side, Trig is sitting on the other side. Prim weighs 1.8 kilograms, Hobe weighs 5.1 kilograms and Trig weighs 4.5 kilograms. So the first thing I'm going to do is add these two uh, masses together. So the total is 5.9 kilograms over this side of the um, balance. So Prim and Hob are uh, 90 centimetres away. We need to convert this into metres. 
we divide that by 100 and that equals 0.9 meters. So that's another thing we can add onto our picture. And then we need to find this distance here. Now, the, I've given their weights, or the, sorry, I've given their masses rather in kilograms. We need to convert kilograms into newtons. The equation we use for this is mass equals weight uh, times gravity. Gravity on Earth is 10, so we need to convert everything by 10. So we times that by 10, so this side we have 65 newtons times by 10, over this side we have 45 newtons. And now we just follow the maths down and do exactly the same as we have been doing for all the other equations. This is a very, very typical question for A-level physics where you have to do a lot of thinking and calculating before you even get to the maths. So, um, moment equals force times distance. The force is 65, the distance is 0 0.9. So 65 times 0.9 equals 58.5 newton meters. Over this side, moment equals force times distance, 58.5 equals 45 times distance. So 58.5 divided by 45 equals... 1.3 meters. Really well done if you managed to get this far. These questions were super, super tricky.